Warning, this project involves lethal voltages and should only be attempted if you completely understand the risks. The information in this video is not complete enough to attempt this if you are not already an expert with electricity. Be warned. Hi and welcome. Uh, last time I was working with titanium doing some sample cuts, I had some issues getting a, a good surface finish on my face cuts and I thought maybe the material was hard and it was deflecting the cutter even though longitudinally it was cutting fine. And that should have been my hint. Um, when I was done I uh, took a magnifying glass and looked at the tip of my carbide cutter and there were some very fine serrations just at the very tip, the wear marks. And uh, as you can tell now, the finish is much better. I just rotated the cutter. So, uh, uh, some lesson learned. Uh, next time, take a closer look at your carbide cutter. Uh, my wife wants me to make her a ring so out of titanium. So, I thought I'd just give it a shot real quick. And uh, anyways, it should be a really quick project. And uh, maybe not overly interesting, but... Uh, I'm going to see if I can color this one electronically because I have acquired the materials, the uh, tools to uh, attempt to electronically color some titanium, so I'm going to do that. Uh, and the coloration process is an anodization process uh, where you're building up an oxide layer that causes interference patterns and you choose the depth so it interferes with all colors but the one you're interested in and uh, anyways, uh, we'll give that a shot coming up. Alright, in the meantime, let's uh, see if we can make the ring. So we're going to go straight for 50,000th uh, 50, depth of cut there. The finish really is wonderful on this material. Especially when you're going uh, fairly slow feed rate, which is uh, two thousandths per revolution. Alright, let's see if we can clear some of the swarf out of here. Yeah, that is really a, a nice finish. Sorry you can't see it. Let me get back in close here. So the finish is really nice. Oh, let's uh, take a quick measurement here. I'm going to take another 50,000 cut. And that's a hundred thousand depth of cut right there, and it's handling it just fine. Okay. So here you can see a closer look up at the finish. That's uh, part of that is a hundred thousand depth of cut. The finish is just superb. What a wonderful material as far as surface finish is concerned. So uh, I'm going to uh, remove some material from the center, and I'll finish by boring it. This stuff is extremely difficult to cut with a drill, just so you know. And I'm not using lubricant because the, uh, the part gets so hard, it's hot, it starts uh, burning the lubricant.
now you see the uh, glowing uh, swarf coming out of there. So I've slowed the lathe way down too. Hot, 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 hot. Okay, let's go up. The other thing is you can't jump drill sizes too quickly. This stuff's too hard to cut. This stuff is nasty to cut. It really is. So once I get to the larger size drill bits, I have no choice. I have to use lube because it's so hard to cut that uh, the drill bit catches and sticks and then spins in the chuck. Well, that's better. Alright, I'd start to say that's probably mandatory then. Can you see the drill bit smoking? Yeah. Stuff is hot. Okay, so we're gonna bore the inside out. So it's a hundred thousand. Okay, I got my zero point. Now we'll do another hundred. So we're shooting for 781, which would be a size 10 ring. My wife wants it for her thumb. 752. Okay. Should be right there. So what I've quickly done is uh, I've taken my parting tool and I figured out where I'm going to have the ring end width-wise, and uh, I'm going to make the ring 0.3 inches uh, wide. And uh, what I did was I, I just started the parting tool a little bit in so that I could see where the edge of the ring is. So I, my wife would like two grooves in it, so I'm going to get my grooving tool and put two grooves symmetrical relative to each side. So I've made the part kind of thin so I'm taking my cut really gently. I'm using a threading tool to uh, cut my groove. And I'll set my zero point. And we'll go and duplicate it. So let's see. Yeah. Uh, zero. Fifty thousandths. And Okay, very nice. So 
at this point I don't want to go all the way in because I want to get my chamfer tool over here so I can chamfer the edge. All right, so I did a little bit of chamfering there. I don't know if I was right on. So I'm gonna continue with the parting tool. Very gently. It's like some space alien out of a movie grabbing onto my uh, pointer there. <laughs> So here is the extremely hot, very lightweight ring, and uh, left a little uh, ridge on this side. Uh, Joe Pizinski had a very interesting uh, discussion about parting tools, and because what's obviously happening is the left side of this parting tool is hitting ever so slightly sooner than the right side, so when it cu finally cuts through, it cuts the right side and leaves the crap on the part. And he was talking about biasing it ever so slightly to the left so it removes it off the part. So I need to remember to do that next time. All right. I gotta go find it in the swarf. <laughs> All right, so here's my setup for uh, anodizing titanium. So I'm gonna do a test piece before I actually do the ring. Um, here's a Variac. It's an old one uh, my dad built many years ago. Uh, it's only 200 watts, so about two amps at 110, roughly. Um, lets you adjust the AC voltage from 0 up to 120. Yeah, essentially it's a variable AC transformer. The output of that, uh, which is fused, goes to a diode bridge which uh, converts the uh, AC to DC, pulsating DC, and then I have a large cap that is uh, rated for high enough voltage to uh, not be uh, have the dielectric breakdown and uh, that's to smooth out the pulse DC that comes out the other side and then that goes, the output of that, just the positive and negative, go to two leads. One of the leads goes to an aluminum pole, which is my negative, and the other side, which is also, I'm currently using a piece of aluminum, you can't submerge that one or it'll oxidize really quickly and it won't work right. So basically I've got to dangle the part inside. I've seen people, some people put the electrode uh, connected to a sponge uh, that's wet with this solution. In the solution is, uh, TSP, I've heard you can use Coca-Cola, uh, Borax, uh, several different solutions. Um, you can look that up online. Um, so you start with the lowest voltage and that will be blue and violet, which makes sense. The, so the lower voltages make the thinnest oxide layer. And the thinnest oxide layer is gonna have interference with the shortest wavelengths, which sort of makes sense, right? It's thin, so the wavelength has to be small to uh, cancel out with the thinner dial, uh, oxide layer. And then as the voltage increases, the oxide layer gets thicker and you end up in the longer wavelengths like red, yellow, orange, etc. Well, orange, yellow, or re yellow, orange, red um, at the highest voltage up to 120 volts. So the process works somewhere between uh, the low, t the, the mid, mid 20s, I think it is, all the way up to 120 volts. Uh, so let's uh, just give it a shot. I, uh, your part needs to be polished and clean for the best thing, uh, for the best results. I uh, really roughly finished a piece of titanium that I just had sitting around. So currently, I've just got a meter across these so I can see what my voltage is. Currently, my voltage is at 26 volts. And uh, by the way, when you start at the lower voltages, uh, you can change to the higher voltages. Uh, the oxide layer will get thicker proportionally and uh, the colors you'll get will match that, but you can't go back. So once the oxide layer is thick, obviously you can't make it thin again. So let's see if I uh, squeeze this a little tighter so we get a better uh, connection. And let's see, we're so... Oh, <laughs> I have to plug it in. I, can't, I leave it unplugged on purpose because uh, I don't want to risk a shock while I'm messing around. All right, so we're at 25 volts, so let's uh, see what we get here. So it immediately changes color. And... Kind of looks like uh, blue. Very nice blue, actually. 
So there we are. Start with blue. Happens almost immediately if the material is nice and clean, like that. Uh, let's just rotate it. So let's uh, let's bump up voltage to say 37 volts. So. That's sort of a violet blue. This is a lighter blue. Hope you can see that. Let's uh, zoom in a little. Oh, there you go. So, lowest voltage, uh, which was about 25, going to uh, 37. And uh, we'll jump up again. Let's go to, say, 45. That's also, that's a lighter blue. Let's go a little bit higher, see if we can transition. So, going to 58. Ah, we're into yellow. And heading to 70. So the voltage is now, 70 volts is starting to get dangerous voltage. The other conductor is here, so I'm just touching one. I will not complete the circuit, but uh, I'm also wearing gloves that are insulating. Looks like 73 is heading for yellow, orange yellow. There we are. Uh, just, yeah. <laughs> the voltage is jumping because I'm taking the load off. So, 73, and let's go to 80. Five. See what color we get. By the way, the gases let off by this process are hydrogen and oxygen because we're actually engaging in electrolysis. Oh, it looks like it's coming back around sort of to a bluish. That's interesting. Or may, the blue was underneath it, so maybe that's why. Interesting. Uh, so it is flammable. Make sure you do this in an area with lots of ventilation. So we'll head up to 100 volts. Definitely voltage range now that can really hurt you. So you do not want to complete the circuit through your body. Yeah, it's interesting. It's sort of uh, looped back around again. You know, we might have gone twice the wavelength. Uh, you know, first we were getting 180 degrees out of phase, and now we're going, uh, then you hit 360, and then you go another one and go 360 plus 180, which is 4, 540. So looks like we're interfering again. We're heading back to blue again, the oxide layer thickness. So I think for my, my choice uh, for the ring, I think my wife would like blue. So I think I am going to head down to uh, the twenties. So let me clean the ring off and uh, come right back. But there you go. All right, so here's the ring I made and uh, uh, I've cleaned it off with some alcohol and uh, possibly even acetone might be a good choice. You want to get all the oils off it. You also want to make sure it's a nice clean finish. And what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to do it a little bit of time and rotate on this electrode here. First we've got to plug it in. And so I'm going to start low. So I'm going to start at 19 volts and uh, we'll go up from there. It's starting to darken a little bit here. So it's sort of at a yellow color. So I think again we're going multiples of uh, wavelengths. 
uh, with the oxide layer thickness. All right, so I think the next step is to head up to about 25 and see if we can get a nice blue out of it because I think that's the color my wife likes. beauty this is if I totally screw it up I can always sand off that fine oxide layer and come back and try again so this is 22 volts I think we're gonna jump up a little higher So under load, it's about 27 volts. Make sure you don't accidentally touch because they will short and you will uh, damage the metal and uh, you probably don't want that. It is fuse protected so there won't be an explosion but uh, you'll probably put a little melt spot in your part. It's really interesting to note that as the camera gets close as I pull the ring up. All right, looks like we are there. You can't see the blue anymore, and that's so, because of the angle, here's the, the way the light's part. hitting it. Or ring, as the case may be. Yeah, it's really funny, because it looks sort of silver here, but to the eye, it's blue. It's kind of right, like... Thanks for watching. Hope to see you next time. It's kind of like parrot feathers. Parrot feathers look uh, different colors, but in reality, they're brown. See you next time. Thanks.